All right, everyone. I don't know if I've alluded to it here on this channel. New manual transmission, Carl. A little fun car that I got just a short while ago. I still haven't made a video on it. On top of the Pista, which I got recently, actually before I got the Pista, I got another vehicle. Now you might be thinking to yourself, Jordan, what the heck? How are you having so many vehicles? This is ridiculous. This one, not an extreme purchase. I mean, it is still a car, but at least in comparison to the other vehicles, like this one's pretty mild. I've been saying for a while that I've, I've wanted to learn to drive manual transmission properly, right? Um, so that if I was ever interested in say a Carrera GT, 2005, 2006 Ford GT, uh, that wouldn't be the car I'm learning on because that's a little bit scary. So I got some training wheels. Allow me to present to you my new to me 2015 Ford Fiesta ST manual. Let me tell you a little bit about this thing. It is, as I said, 2015 Ford Fiesta ST. It's white. You might not be able to tell because I leave it parked on the street and it's covered in lots of dirt right now, but you know what? She's still pretty to me. Has a manual transmission. I've been driving it around sort of as a daily driver for the past three, four weeks since I got it. And I'll tell you, LA traffic is a great way to really quickly get acclimated with manual transmission. Because when it comes to manual transmission, the hard part is not when you're actually moving, it's kind of the stop and go, which is the unfun part. But if you can master stop and go, you're kind of there, other than rev matching, at least. So I feel actually fairly comfortable with manual transmission versus when I was learning in the Mustang, like a year or so back. It only becomes a little bit of an issue when you're crawling up a hill, which actually happens every now and again here, especially when I'm leaving my gym parking lot. It's construction. They're doing some stuff on the street and it is a little crawl up this steep hill and it's so obnoxious, but I'll tell you, if you can do that, you can do pretty much anything. Anyway, let me give you the run through of this beautiful, beautiful vehicle. Check it out. Black cloth interior with the white contrast. It has contrast stitching. Not even the GT had contrast stitching from the factory. I had to add that after the fact. It's got these really nice rubber floor mats. I'll tell you, it's been raining a lot lately. It's nice to have a car I can drive in the rain and it's cool. I park it on the street. It gets dirty and stuff. Not that I can't drive the other cars in the rain, but you know, try to keep them cleaner and stuff, even though when I was daily driving the GT3 RS, nothing you can really do. Thing with me and manual transmission cars, I have to sit very close to the steering wheel. See how much further I am up than the other seat over here? The clutch pedal travel is far and I have short legs. If I go too much further, I'm gonna be straight legged and that's gonna be uncomfortable. So this is full in on the clutch and this is me on the brake. I know that's kind of how it is, but I have short legs and that's that's the one issue. But as you can see, manual transmission, three pedals, zooming through the gears. Check it out, dude. You see that speed? On top of this, we have ourselves a whole back seat. Can you believe this? All the other cars have two doors. This one what a luxury. has four. You kind of cut your legs off there if, if you're full back on the front seat. But you know what, I'll tell you, I can put those seats down, can I? Where do I do that? Can I? <laughs> you just have to get the seat belt out of the way. Oh my God, it has a spare tire. Dude, look at that, there's a spare tire in there. I didn't even know this. It's amazingly practical. Isn't that pretty standard? <laughs> Not that any other car I have. Put down the seats, you could put like a suitcase, in, like a full size suitcase. Amazing what you can do with Compared a car. Compared to your other cars, that really yes. is <laughs> not standard. Sick wing, absolute monster of a wing back here. I'll tell you the downforce that thing creates, it's gotta be just about equal to the Porsche GT3 RS wing on the back. I mean, check it out too. Now look, look at this sucker. I throw groceries into that. I can go to the grocery store, park in any spot, not having to worry about are there cars next to me on either side? And then I can put the groceries in. Let me show you the absolute beast of performance features this thing has. First off, you can draw smiley faces on the back. That is a very, very important thing to be able to do with any car. The previous owner of this thing obviously really cared about it. It only has 22,000 miles, which is nothing for a daily driver kind of car like this. I had to look up this exhaust system because I wanted to make sure that he didn't do anything that was gonna hurt the smogging. So I had to look this up. This is a $500 exhaust kit that the previous owner put on this car. 
$500 exhaust kit. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. We'll turn it on and hopefully not bother the people in these houses too much. But it's like, I turned this thing on when I was test driving at the dealership and I was like, freaking fancy system, dude. This is, is a proportion of the cost of the car. This would be like me spending $5,000 on an exhaust system for the GT3 RS. 10,000 for like the Pista or something like, dude went all out. He also, assuming it's, it could be a sheep, would you look at the fake center lock wheels that I have here on the car? This is performance at its absolute best. That's my phone, my alarm going off. <laughs> I mean, you'd think they were real. They've got carbon fiber little bits there on the interior, dude. These are actually nice looking wheels, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, you pop this sucker off here, dude, from one of these tabs and you have lugs underneath. But it looks cool, right? Center locks look cool. I just wanted to make sure, I was like, are these real center locks? And I was just checking it out at the dealership. They're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know about that. I'm like, it's kind of, they look cool, but they're also not very practical to, to deal with. You have to actually get the wheel off with like the GT3 RS. You need a breaker bar. It's like this, this long to freaking 500 foot pounds. Crazy. I actually do really like the wheels. They're so much cooler than the stock wheels. Yeah, it's a little gimmicky with the center locks, but freaking whatever, dude. We have, of course, the accenting black roof here. I thought you were gonna say the accenting dirt. The accenting dirt on top of the accenting black roof. It is not a bad looking car. It, I look back at when I park it and I walk away, I'm like, I'm like that meme with the guy the girlfriend. And the girl, yeah, the girlfriend meme, whatever you Also, look at this. Look at this. This has got a capless gas. That's you get that in the 4 GT, you get that in the Pista. I didn't even know that was an option. You get that. That's some race stuff right there, dude. How fancy are we? Capless, center locks, catch me at the track. So, let me get into a couple uh well quirky bits about this thing though. So, slight part of what I want to learn in driving a manual transmission car is heel to rev matching. Obviously important if you're going to do exciting spirited canyon drives, track driving, that sort of stuff. If you're not familiar with what heel to rev matching is, the idea is when you're downshifting the car from, let's say we want to go from third to second, we're on kind of a tight canyon road. So you're going to be braking, 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 and then you're going to go clutch in. And then as you're downshifting, you're, we're still braking, we're gonna blip the gas, and then we're gonna release the clutch while still braking, go into the corner. The issue here is the gas and the brake are kind, they're a little, little bit far apart. I might have really narrow feet, but here's the thing. I've driven a 911 manual before at the Porsche Experience Center. I had no issue with the gas and the brake placement for heel toe shifting. So it means that there is a difference between cars. I'm sure there are some people out there who probably own one of these. You haven't done any modifications to the pedal spacing, anything like that, and you're fine. You're able to do it. That's good for you, but even if there is a way to do it, it's not particularly comfortable. Yes, I can kind of do it there, but with this car, I'll brake, 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 get into sort of my entry speed for the corner, and then after that, I'll, uh, I'll let off the brake with the clutch in, and then as I'm doing the downshift, I'll do gas and then let it out. Um, so I'll kind of do this like switching pedal thing, which has worked. It's not gonna get you the fastest lap time, but just in terms of making the drive smooth, I'll just take my foot off and give it a blip all on its own. But you need like a big, I'll find myself going all the way to the back because this engine does not have all that much power. Um, so in order to actually get it up, I have to give it a pretty solid blip, which is hard to do given the placement. So I might add like a pedal spacer. I might add a little extender to widen the gas pedal just so they're a little bit closer together. It'll make it a little bit easier to do that. But I do know that at least on other cars with different pedal placement, 911s for example, it's very reasonable and you don't need to give it on those nearly as much of a blip in order for the whole thing to work. We'll get used to it. But in the meantime, I'm doing rev matching by just blipping the gas on its own as I downshift. Is that the technical term? Heel toe rev matching? No, blip. Yeah, it actually is. Oh, I thought you were just making <laughs> No, no, blipping <laughs> throttle is actually what it is. I know so little about cars. Um, Another thing that's sort of a eh 
about this car. So because it's not very powerful, I don't actually know exactly how much power is, somewhere like the 100. 97 horsepower range. I want to have a training wheel kind of car. Thought about the Focus RS. Galpin didn't have any, so I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, this is even going to be smaller. It'll be better training wheels, probably. It's got a much more fine bite point, less power, which means you have to fine tune it more and you're actually better practiced at engaging the clutch on a car that's less powerful. So because it's less powerful, it has a massive, massive first gear. That means that by the time I'm at like 15 miles an hour, or like 12 miles an hour, we're up in like the 4,000, 4,500 rev range. And then the ratio between first and second is like gigantic. First is probably double that of second. So I'm in, I'm in first over here. And then I shift to second, I'm like, wait for it, wait for it. Revs drop, revs drop, revs drop, revs drop. All right, all right, we're down to, we're down to 2,000, cool, I can engage. Otherwise it bucks because you're not letting the revs drop far enough. And then it all of a sudden, has to match the road speed, so it just goes way down. It's even worse if you're on a hill, because <laughs> you like get up to 15 miles an hour on a hill, it's like, eh. especially with the exhaust, you're like 4,500 revs, so then you let off the gas to do your shift from first to second. The car is slowing down a whole bunch in the meantime because you're on a hill without giving it any gas, and then you have to wait, you're like five miles an hour now, and finally you're like, okay, I can disengage the clutch and be in second and be fine. So bit of a gripe there. Again, driven a Porsche 911. I know it's unfair to compare a 911 to this car, but still the first to second shift is a bit uh, Granted, if you're doing performance driving, you're not shifting down into first. Second to third, it, not nearly as significant of having to wait, but you still have to wait a little bit. Then third to fourth, fourth to fifth, etc., is you can just do it as fast as you want. But if you want to have a smooth ride, you gotta wait a lot between first and second. Otherwise, it's a fun little car to drive. I will say, having a manual transmission car, um, it makes it definitely like a more engaging experience. It's, it's more fun to drive. And uh, other than when you're dealing with slow cars on hills, which happens decently a lot in LA. But aside from that, having a low powered car with a manual transmission is far more fun than it would be if this was just an auto even with paddles so that's cool i get it and it does make me excited to potentially at some point get like a, a gt3 manual or a ford gt carrera gt carrera gt would be the dream we'll see if that happens i'm not sure we could go for a quick drive i can show you kind of the first second shift how that whole thing works and then uh, how i rev match absolutely beautifully it's, it's flawless at this point could use no further work so uh let's uh, let's do that and wrap it up I don't want to go too loud and be obnoxious to the people in the house. <laughs> so, but it gets loud. We'll we'll drive now. Just bring the brake down. Sometimes you it's forget. Kind of important. It's kind of important, but anyway. So, here it's like, right? We approach a stop. We're gonna go into first, and now I'm gonna take off in first, and then I'm gonna go into second. I have to wait. And now I can engage smoothly. It's just a little bit longer wait time than I think you have to do in other cars, but it's nothing detrimental. Um, it just can be a little bit wonky when you're going up a hill, which we'll be doing shortly. But otherwise, I mean, the suspension is actually, it's pretty firm in this, um, which I like. It's, it's a little bouncy for the sake of, you know, holding the camera and trying to film B-roll, but um, for actually driving around and giving it a sporty experience. It's kind of nice. It does torque steer like very, very, very easily. It doesn't have amazing grip by any means. Like if I give it just a little bit too much gas for its uh, grip to handle, you can start feeling it like pull due to the front wheel drive torque steering not having a bunch of grip. That said, this obviously isn't a car that you would expect to compete with the other ones that I'm more used to driving. So it's kind, it's, it's kind of unfair coming from what I usually am driving versus this thing. But at the same time, I do think it gives you probably a, a better, more fine-tuned experience of driving a manual transmission that makes you more ready for other cars down the road. So now we're about to go up a hill, and uh, this will kind of show what I'm talking about with having to really wait for the 
revs to drop before I can engage second without it being all clunky and jerky. So it's like, all right, up a hill, like 4K, go second, wait, 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 and now finally we can engage. That's probably my only real gripe with the thing so far is the amount of time that you have to like wait for the revs to drop just in those two gears, but those are the gears that I find myself using most often because of how stop and go LA traffic is and the fact that I live around kind of a hilly area, but it'll prepare me for anything. And a car like a Carrera GT, for example, might take some getting used to because I know with that one, you actually can't feed in any gas before you fully let off the clutch, so, I'll, I'll drive. Fortunately, I actually have a couple friends who have them and they've offered to let me drive it. I'm like, you know, we'll wait until I'm like super comfortable and then I'll take you up on that offer. Anyway, here, check it out. I'm gonna do my brake and then I let off the brake and then give it some gas and then go into second there. That's my, that's my fake heel toe rev matching or just rev matching, I should say, because I'm not actually doing a perfectly valid technique. It's just not great for like performance driving. All right, so now more steep hill first gear, bouncy, and then wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, then engage, and then it's still a little, a little bit jumpy, but, but then I'm like back down to five miles an hour. So every car, every different transmission is gonna have different characteristics, and it's like you just gotta get used to, uh, to how this one behaves. All in all though, it's been a fun experience with this thing. Obviously I'll have it for a while longer. I've actually, you know, having this thing, I've really, I've missed just how useful it is. Okay. Hi, garbage okay. truck. It's like, he's just like, he wants to shove me out of the way. Yeah, he saw I was vlogging and I can't, <laughs> I can't really blame him. <laughs> See, here's where it gets annoying. So you have to fully stop because there are bins in the road. And then we have to freaking hill start it. And then because of hill start assist, it's actually not terribly bad. So thank you. But if there was no hill start assist, which there wouldn't be on most manual transmission cars older than like five years ago, uh, I would have had to spin my wheels probably because I'm not good at it. A couple things to practice still for sure, and I am thinking of getting a pedal spacer just to make heel towing a little bit more reasonable here. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Thanks for giving the walkthrough. I will do like a canyon drive at some point in the near future. Have a, a fun little go. Um, but until then, uh, if, you like, if you like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you later. Have a good one.